Flags are one of the most underutilized tools in the studio. Basically, flags are used to control the spill of your light. And so a flag is anything that's solid black and you can use to block light where you don't want it to be hitting. That's how I want you to think about it. Flags are used to block and control spill. And so a flag can be many things. It doesn't have to actually be something fancy that you buy because a flag could be something as simple as a black piece of foam core or a piece of cinefoil. The key is that they're not reflecting light, that they're blocking light and that they're black. And so I'll use a piece of foam core, for example, if there's a, a highlight on my subject that I don't want. I can put it in between the light and my subject and use it to cast just a little bit of a shadow. So these are good, inexpensive DIY solutions for a flag, but you can actually buy flags. Here's an example of a flag made by Westcott, and you can buy flags in all different shapes and all different sizes. And this one is specifically intended for portability. It can actually break down. In a flag kit, instead of having just solid black, sometimes there's a black mesh. So instead of completely blocking the light, it'll block most of the light and allow a little bit through. There are flags that are permanently constructed that you can't break down. So there's many different options. Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as it is blocking the light and is the size that you need to create the correct type of shadow. So I'm going to explain this and we're going to break down how to use flags and different considerations for the types of modifiers you're using and how that'll affect what flag light looks like. All right, so I'm going to move these off set and I'm going to invite Jen on and I'm going to give you a little demonstration. First of all, let's talk about flagging on our subject. One of the reasons you might want to flag on a subject is perhaps they have a really bright colored shirt or a bare shoulder and it's creating a highlight that you don't want. Maybe you want to put a little bit of a shadow there, draw the attention back towards the face. The reason that I often flag people's faces is either for creativity, I want to put an interesting shadow across the face, or I find very often with bald or balding men that I can put a shadow on the top of their heads to try to draw attention away from the bright shine. Flags are going to show up most, be most noticeable when you're using hard light. So let's talk about the qualities of hard light. You know that when you use hard light, there is an abrupt transition from shadow to highlighting. Basically the shadows are very crisp. And so if you're using a hard light and then adding a flag, the flag is going to be more noticeable. So for example, with Jen here, if I use this hard light and bring this flag in very, very close, you can see just how crisp that shadow can be. If I did the exact same thing with a soft box, you're not going to see the same crispness of the shadow created by the flag. Now, one more note is the distance of your flag from the subject to the light makes a difference. So notice when I'm very, very close, I can see the shadow from the flag. But when I pull the flag away, closer to the light source, away from my subject, see how the edge of the, the shadow becomes more diffused? It's softer. So if I want to actually see that shadow really, really crisp, I've got to bring my flag close. If I want it to be more diffused, more subtle, maybe just a little bit of a shadow on top of the head, I'm going to bring the flag away from my subject. All of these things are exaggerated by using the hard light. All right, so now I want to demonstrate what that flag looks like uh, when I vary the distance to my subject and show you a couple other considerations. So Stephen, will you step in and hold that for me? Of course, they make uh, different grips and things that you can use it for a flag and not need an assistant, but for ease of use and time, I'm gonna ask Stephen to hold it for me. All right, so first of all, let's take a shot without the flag. Okay, and let's say that I think that the right-hand side of the frame is just a little bit bright and I wanna darken down the hair, for example. What I know is that if I don't want it to be a crisp line, I'm gonna have the flag closer to the light source, away from my subject. So Stephen, can you darken that right-hand side of the face just a little? Good. So you'll notice how it darkens down the right-hand side of the frame. Another thing that you'll notice is that the background goes dark. And the reason being is there's no background light. So when he puts the light uh, to block the face, it also blocks some light from the background. So there are of course consequences to using flags, but I often use flags to darken down the background. So you gotta think of it that way. All right, so right now it's more of a subtle shadow. It darkens down the entire right-hand side of the face. Steven, will you bring it in nice and close? This is if I were being creative. 
Uh, instead of just trying to darken down the top of the hair or the top of the head, now I want to see a distinct shadow. Great. And now you can actually see the line of the shadow. The background got a little bit lighter because the angle that he was holding the flag at, some of the light now creeped around. My point is, is if he used a big flag, the light wouldn't have hit the background. If he uses a tiny flag, more light will hit the background. So this is why the size and shape matters and why I often use black foam core because I can just cut it to fit the specifications that I need. So this looks great. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a soft light source. So you can see how the effect is much, much more subtle when you're not using something with crisp defined shadows. So we're going to switch over to a large umbrella with diffusion. All right, so now we're going to try this again, but with a soft light source. You'll see how the results are much more subtle. So Stephen, will you pop in and we're going to use, uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like with no flag. I'm going to put the flag further away from the subject and then closer. You'll still see a difference, but it's not going to be as defined, which actually could be exactly what you're looking for. All right, so here's with no flag. All right, Stephen, will you put just a little bit of shadow on the right hand side? Great. All right. So in this example, you'll see that the highlight on Jen's hair right here got just a little bit darker, and that's because there's not as much light reaching that highlight. Now, if I want it to be even more defined, Stephen, can you bring that in as close as you can? Real close, just out of my frame. All right. So now you'll see that it puts the entire part of her head on the right hand side in shade, meaning it created a more defined shadow the closer it was to the subject. So if you would like more subtle results, definitely use a soft light source. But also know if you're trying to achieve dramatic results where you really see the defined shadow, if you've got a big soft light source, you're not gonna see it. The best way to see it with soft light is you're gonna bring it just out of your frame. So if you're ever trying, maybe uh, there's a bright highlight on someone's ear or on the side of the face, or maybe with the bald head, if you have your flag several feet from your subject, it's going to create real subtle results to actually see that shadow. Basically the flag will be inches from the outside of your frame. All right, so this is an example of using a flag for your subject. Um, honestly though, most of the time I'm using flags for the background, especially when I'm in small spaces because I'm using a big soft light source like this, maybe in a smaller space, a lot of that light is going to kick back and hit the background. But perhaps I want the background to be just a little bit darker. So that's when I personally would bring in a flag. Now, uh, for full length shots, I would probably use a V flat, you know, the, the big pieces of foam core, because then I make sure I cast a shadow from head to toe. To darken down the background, personally, this piece of foam core would not be enough because too much light can get around it. I need something bigger. The V flat's a great solution, or I'm gonna switch over to this Westcott flag. So Steven, I'm gonna pass this to you. All right, great. I'm gonna show you what this looks like without the flag so you can see how a lot of light's hitting the background and then we'll add the flag in, it's going to cast a shadow. All right, so you can see in the shot that a lot of the light is still hitting the background. Even though this main modifier isn't pointed straight at the background, I actually have it feathered across. So the point of that was to make less light reach the background and it's still a little bit too light. So Steven, can you bring in this flag? And when I place this, the key is I don't want there to be shadow hitting my subject's face. So here won't work because it's blocking light from my subject. So it either needs to be further back or um, it needs to be feathered out. So something like this. Can you see how the light in the upper part of the umbrella that was hitting the background is now blocked? Uh, I find it very useful if you're using soft light sources and want to see a flag to turn off all of your ambient light because you to the camera and to my naked eye, I can't see what it's doing. I have to kind of guess or take a picture. So if I use the modeling lights and turned out ambient light, it would be easier for me to see. So let's take the same exact shot now that I have a flag and you'll see that darken down the background significantly. It is an extremely dark, almost black gray simply by blocking the light. So in a small space, with large light sources, a lot of spill of light, flags are going to be an excellent solution to give you more control. So one final way that you might use a flag would be in a full length shot. So Jen, I'm gonna stand you up. And let's say that the light is spreading 
head to toe and it's just getting a little bit too much light at the bottom of the feet. I can put a flag in front of the light, but closer to the feet and cast a shadow there as well. Um, so let me grab this and Steven, I'm gonna take a shot. Can you just move the flag out for a sec? I'm gonna take a full length shot and then we're gonna flag off the bottom. All right. Okay, so let's say that I think just a little bit down here on the floor is a little bit too bright. It's pulling the eye too much. So I add a flag. I could have an assistant hold a piece of foam core or we can adjust this flag so that we can cast a shadow on the ground. Perfect. Thanks, Steven. Let's try, can I rotate this a little? Try that, okay, perfect. All right, so now, now you will see where that bright highlight was in the bottom right hand side of the frame. Now it is pretty much completely in shadow. And so I feel like it's a very important control to make sure the eye is going where I intend it to. In this, in this particular photograph, it's to the subject's face. So this is how I typically use flags. Typically I'll use it to block light from the subject's face block light from the background or block light on part of the frame that I think has too much spill of light. And so fundamentally it's blocking spill and giving you control. You can buy a flag or you can make your own.